Good evening, everyone. My name is Hermione Bell Henderson with the Milwaukee Public Library, and I'd like to welcome you to our program tonight. Tonight's program is Small Business Success Story featuring Blush Beat Beauty. Um, tonight, we have Daryl Ann, who is a Milwaukee native that has spent the beginning of her career working with nonprofits such as City Year, Boys and Girls Club, and United MKE. Though she continues to be a community advocate, her goals have shifted after becoming a mother of two, leading her to create a safe space for women of all backgrounds to feel beauty in the skin they're in. Today, she'll be talking more about her discovery of self-worth and breaking generational mindsets that have led her to being the artist and the businesswoman that she is today. Um, we are very happy to host you today, Daryl Ann. Um, MPL's mission is um, inspiration starts here. We help people read, learn, and connect. And we're happy that you're here to talk to us tonight um, and connect you to people who also might be inspired to start a business, especially in the beauty industry. So with that, um, for all of our participants tonight, um, we will have an opportunity for you to ask Daryl Ann questions at the end. Um, but without further ado, um, take it away, Daryl Ann. Hi, yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited um, to be able to come in here and talk to you. Granted, the circumstances were a lot different. Um, I had power <laughs> at my house and no longer have that. So, but we're making it work. Um, I'm outside of Starbucks um, using their Wi-Fi. So fingers crossed if um, that continues to work for me. Um, so as um, was mentioned, I am born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, and so I really want to, for people to understand where my story or where I'm at, it takes like the understanding of why I'm passionate um, about what I do. And that for me um, starts years ago. Uh, so I just want to give you some background about me. Um, so I have grown up, I am the oldest of four siblings and I have four parents. I like to put it that way. My parents, both my parents remarried at a very young age um, or when I was very young. So I've had both of my step parents um, for majority of my life and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, but it's also crazy because my dad and my stepmom had different, you know, values. I got to see different households and how, um, what was valued in each household and take from that. Um, and that's actually gone a lot way, a long way in my experience. So like my dad and my stepmom were very like academically focused, you know, like you got to get good grades. Um, you know, you got to go to college after high school while my mom and my stepdad were very, um, focus on, you know, just obtaining like a good job, just make sure you have a good job, make sure it has benefits, healthcare and all that. Um, so they later like pivoted and were like, make sure, try to get a trade, you know, a skill um, that fits you. Um, so after high school, actually in high school, I wasn't a very good student academically. Like I was very attentive and I really tried my best, but um, school, I, I wasn't organized, you know, that's a lifelong thing that I'm like trying to keep up with. I wasn't organized. Um, I was, the test taking did not fit me. Um, I do horribly with tests and then the learning style, I'm a more of like a hands-on and visual learner. And as we all know, schooling, um, in the United States is like very lecture style. Um, so imagine like what it was like for me going off to college my first year and it's just emphasizing all the things that I'm horrible at and I was feeling very discouraged because at a very young age I knew that I wanted to be a teacher I was like I want to be a teacher um, I was very good with kids like I said I'm the oldest of four by like a, a big gap so I've always been around children and involved with children and that's what I thought I wanted to do um, I had a cousin who did AmeriCorps at the time. And she was graduating from City Year, Milwaukee. And she's like, I think like, you should just like take a gap year, be a part of this nonprofit. It, you're going into schools, you're working with children. It sounded great. So I joined City Year and in City Year, I was a core member who tutored children in math, 
reading and behavior. I was in a school on the South side called Alexander Mitchell. And um, I really enjoyed that experience so much so that they asked me to come back for a second year um, where I was a team leader. So during that time, um, I kind of pivoted my second year. I was like, I want to be a principal. <laughs> I love leading people. This is great. Um, but it's funny how I was like raising the stakes um, or my dreams and I couldn't even like make it past my second year of college. Um, so it's funny because in hindsight, like when I look back at it, I think the most attractive thing that I liked about being a teacher and a principal was being able to like cultivate a space um, for youth and um, just like make it, you know, a place of growth and impact in, in a positive way and was able to like, you know, as a teacher, you have your own classroom, you're able to create in the way that you want to and inspire in the way that you want to. So like, that's how I've reflected on it um, now looking back. Um, but during that time, um, oh, so I left City Year. I left City Year, and after that, I started. I went to Boys and Girls Club, continued tutoring, um, and then I joined a United MKE where I worked with like pregnant women. And actually, in that time, um, I had had my firstborn son, Theo, and he. Um, that's when things really shifted for me after having a, a son of my own. Um, because it changed from passion driven to money driven because I wasn't in the best place financially. You know, working for nonprofit is good for the heart, not always the pockets. Um, and I was just feeling drained. I was like giving a lot to the nonprofit world. I was a new mom and, you know, that's 365 days, 24 seven, you're on the clock. And I was in a really bad place in my relationship. Um, I was in a very toxic environment. And actually that was probably the most draining aspect of my life at that point. Um, but did I think that? No, absolutely not. I was just like, you know what? I am upset and drained because I'm broke. <laughs> and instead of like leaving that environment, I just decided that I just need to go make more money. So I ended up, um, that's when I started serving tables. Um, serving tables was great because, you know, it's quick. You get quick money. Most restaurants um, let you work a shift and you get paid out immediately. It was flexible. I could spend more time with my son um, during the hours that were like he needed me the most. Um, and it wasn't emotionally draining. So I could clock in, do my work and then clock out and wouldn't have any emotional baggage to take home with me. Um, and that those things were very important for me at the time. Um, during my time, I had not started wearing makeup really at this time when I started serving tables. Um, I had worked with this one woman named Sasha at this burger bar and she was just like glam, bam, every time she came in, like just eyes, just like so fierce, just full glam. And I'm like, oh my God, we're like, we're serving burgers. Like what, what's going on? But it was just like, no questions asked. And the next day she would have no makeup on and no one would bat an eye either. And to me, like, I just remember like, oh my gosh, like, I don't need a reason to like, I admired her because like, she didn't need a reason to get dressed up. She didn't need a reason to be glam and no one questioned. And I think like, um, that gave me a lot of comfort, um, for someone who didn't wear makeup much at all. Um, so during that time I started like dabbling in makeup and trying new looks. I wasn't very good at it <laughs> by any means, but, um, like I felt a lot of comfort in that. So in my journey of chasing the money, I also was like job hopping a lot from restaurant to restaurant um, because, you know, you're like, okay, this restaurant has higher clientele. This restaurant has higher, like better clientele, more money, more money. Um, and it got to the point where I'm like working all these doubles and I'm like losing the reasons why I like was getting into it, which was to spend more time with my son um, because, you know, I'm working all these doubles and I was like, making I'm like just trying to make like $200 and I'm there for like 12 to 13 hours it was just getting ridiculous so then um I ended up finally hitting this one restaurant 
uh, getting into this one restaurant, it was very high end, um, very nice clientele. The servers that have been working there, like been working there for like 20 years, they're making anywhere from 40 to 60 K. I was like, this is a game changer, you know, like I don't have to have a college degree. Like this can be like kind of my place. Like, even though I know I didn't want to serve for the rest of my life, like I felt like it was a good place to be. And it was, I was able to get a new car. I was able to get a new apartment. Um, I was able to stop like move, uh, living check to check. And it was very, um, it, it definitely helped me in that way a lot. But the further I got into it and the more, um, it was just a very not good place to work. Um, I wouldn't say that I was the only one mistreated at that establishment, but I was the only woman of color working there. And I just wasn't able to enjoy any of the aspects of myself um, that I like. Like I couldn't even wear my hair naturally without being questioned about it or scrutinized about it by management. It wasn't ha didn't even have anything to do with you know clientele. Um, it just got to the point where I was just like, am I really putting money over like my values? I, like, I was just getting very uncomfortable working there. Um, and ultimately, no, I didn't. I just I ended up leaving actually in the middle of a shift. Um, there was an incident that happened. And I was just like, this is just too much. So I ended up leaving with not much in my bank account. <laughs> um, and I... I was just like, okay, like, what am I going to do at this point? I had already started practicing makeup on others. Like I had a friend who was into doing music. So she was like into doing music videos. And she had another friend who did music videos. And it was awesome because she was white and her friend was black. So I was able to like practice on both skin, um, skin tones and get that versatility. Um, and she would just constantly have me practicing on her. And I'm grateful for that looking back now because I see a lot of artists um, locally that like, you know, they only have, they only specialize in like fair skin or they only specialize in dark skin tones. And I think it's very important to be able to um, be able to be inclusive in my, um, in my craft. So at that point I had left, like I said, I didn't have much in my bank account. And the first thing that I do after quitting my job is go on vacation. I went on vacation. I, it was very like counterintuitive, right? But it was crazy because while I'm on this trip, I'm like seeing like I just felt freer in the moment and like had the mind space to be like, okay, this is not what I want my life to be. Like, why am I stressing so much over money? What, what is the worst case scenario? That was like what I kept asking myself. The worst case scenario is I will have to go get another serving job. There are a million other serving jobs out there, but that's not what I really wanted. I decided that money wasn't my main driving factor and that um, I wanted to be able to create a space for women to feel empowered because I think that's what I was lacking in a lot of my my work is like empowerment and I loved being able to like wake up one day and wear a face full of glam and it was that was it and then the next day I'm bare faced and I'm still feeling empowered because it was my choice to wake up and present myself like that. So that's the, like uh, the drive behind um, me being a makeup artist is giving women that same empowerment. So um, let's see. that's when I pivoted and I started learning more about manifestation. Now I know like some people don't believe in manifestations, but at least consider the idea of like, you know, law of attraction, the law of attraction, what you put out in the world is what you're receiving back. So I had to think, I was like, while I was on the road, I was like, okay, what do, what does a full-time makeup artist do? What does a full-time makeup artist look like? Well, first off, they have a website. So that was one of the first things that I did was created a website for myself. Um, I went on Wix.com 
um, they had like a nice startup package and they helped you me set up my website. Um, and I uploaded what I had in my portfolio there and boom, like within like the first week I was already getting bookings. Second thing that I was like, okay, what else does a, a full-time makeup artist do? A full-time makeup artist manages her social media. So immediately I had to put it out into the world. Like, hi, I'm doing this full time now. Like, this is no longer a hobby. This is my bread and butter book with me. Um, just making that post, like lets people aware that you're serious about what you're doing. Um, I think that's a, what a lot of people fear when they start a new business is how they were presented how they are perceived and like being perceived differently and starting um, off on a different foot from there on. So you have to let go of that fear of like, okay, what about all the, what are people thinking of me now? Because I was just like, I was just serving tables yesterday and now I'm a makeup artist. Yes. Yep. I am. <laughs> I am a makeup artist now. Um, so making that post and like being able to sit down um, and strategize. Um, what I also did was I went and invested in a class. So I went and invested in my knowledge um, from a makeup artist that is already successful. So I want to go and look at people who are doing what I want to be doing. Um, and for me, that was this woman called Julia Dantes, and she's um, from Canada, and she offered like a $500 course and the reason I had picked her was because a lot of people, they, they give you like, they want to give you like, okay, the color wheel, this is what the color wheel is. And this is what you're doing for clients. I had already, I already know that I already knew that information. So I'm looking for like concrete ways to like build my clientele, manage my social media, um, and the business aspect of things, um, which was a great way for me to do that. And she gave me like tangible steps, um, to, um, tangible steps. It was $500, but I honestly believe that anybody that you have to pay for knowledge at times, not everything is free. Granted, we live in an era where like everything is on YouTube now. And I've learned so much from YouTube, but YouTube is not going to, help me like hone in on like skills that I'm missing, business skills that I'm missing, um, or really help me focus on what the bigger picture was. And I think that taking courses by people that you admire and are where you want to be is a great way to um, step into that new reality. So let's see. Um, yes. Other things, um, I highly recommend doing would be to be finding a mentor. For me, I have a mentor who is the shop owner of where I do makeup out of. Um, she, I went to her shortly after I had quit my job and it was crazy because I was getting my hair done by my hairstylist and I was just telling her, I was like, oh my gosh, I like just quit my job. And the only thing I know how to do to make money right now is serve tables and do makeup. And at the time I was only bringing in like $500 a month doing makeup. And it wasn't anything um, that I could, you know, survive off of. And she was like, okay, well, why don't you apply here? She was at the salon that I was getting my hair done at. And she was like, why don't you apply here? We're looking for a makeup artist. So I applied and the shop owner, calls me shortly after and it's like, Darlan, um, like, tell me what it is that you see, where you see yourself in a year. Tell me what it is that you bring to the table. Um, and it was nice to have someone sit down and even though she's not a makeup artist, a, a successful business woman, um, to tell me all the things that like, okay, you need, yeah, you're, you're good at your skill, but are you managing your books? Are you posting consistently? Are you running deals? 
like here you need to fix your lighting in these pictures try this angle um so it was amazing like i highly recommend finding a mentor it doesn't have to be in the field that you're necessarily in but someone who um is successful in the field they're in they're always going to have some kind of tidbits um, to share with you and some gems that you can apply into your own field. Um, other things that I contribute to like being where I'm at right now is social media. Like I've really, I have a love hate relationship with social media because it, it's so time consuming. It's almost like its own job. Right. But it really is the basis of like, it's free advertisement it's free advertisement. You make a post and you can share it with a million people, a uh, million people instantly. Um, and I think that now that I'm in school, I'm actually in school right now um, for my esthetician's license, that I'm noticing that a lot of people who are new to this are scared um, of their social media. And again, it's like the idea that like, what are the people who knew you yesterday going to think? Well, now you have, you're, you're a new you, so everybody's going to have to relearn who you are, and you're going to have to present yourself differently. Um, words that I live by is you always want to wake up and present yourself from where you want to be. So your higher being, what is the person that you want to be? What would they be doing right now? Are they scared to invest in themselves? No. No, you're not moving from those places. You're moving from already being successful. You have to release those fears. Um, and it's definitely harder, um, I should say, easier said than done because we all, you know, clench to the idea of like, what happens if I don't have that um, consistent income? So like, I want you to think about, like, just take a second I don't know. I don't know what your hopes and dreams are, but take a second to ask yourself, what are things that are no longer serving you? You reflect on where you're at right now. What are things that are no longer serving you? For me, it was a job, right? Just take a few seconds. What is, what is causing you more stress than relief right now. You also should ask yourself, what are your core values and beliefs? For me, I thought it was money. I thought I was going to be happy just making money and that's just not what, that wasn't the case. For me, my core values um, are going to be family time. So my family always comes first no matter what, I work around my family. I don't like my job. I don't work around my job. And what are some like beliefs that you have are holding on to that are limiting yourself? For me, my belief was if I don't have a steady job that I'm going to starve and end up on the street. Just wasn't true. So take a minute to think about that. And then the last question I really want to ask you is like, okay, what is the worst case scenario? What is the worst case scenario if you were to just take the leap? Worst case scenario, you would have to borrow money from a friend. Worst case scenario, you would have to crash on someone's couch worst case scenario. But the thing is, the worst case scenario is it's still working itself out, right? Even if it's like you don't want to be in that position, you know at the end of the day where you can, where you can go, what you can do to make it work. Um, the last, like one of the last things I want to touch on is networking and collaborating. Okay. So that has been huge for me. I know that in the field that I work in, or even like any services, um, any service-based thing, you get to the point where 
people don't, you don't want to do anything for free. And I don't believe in that. Like I see people being like, I'm too good to be doing things for free. Like, you know how far I've come. If you like more power to you, but like, I'm not where I want to be. Like, I want to be doing makeup on New York Fashion Week. I want to be featured in a magazine. So I'm going to continuously build my portfolio um, outside of the norm. So yes, I get a ton of brides. I get a ton of um, local prom and whatnot, but that's not what the overall goal is. My overall goal is to continuously push the limits for my makeup. So I need to continuously be pushing my, my portfolio. And, you know, the average consumer is not booking those kind of looks, right? So I am going to go out of my way to collaborate with photographers. I'm going to go out of my way to network with models. I'm going to go out of my way. Like just yesterday, like there was a woman on Facebook who said like, I have this modeling brand that I'm like taking over and, you know, moving forward. This is new management. It's all me. And I reached out to her and put myself out there. I was like, you know, I'm a makeup artist in the area. I have done a lot of work for local designers. Um, I didn't tell them it was for free, but, you know, I put myself out there so they know that I'm available to, um, for them. And I can create looks that a lot of local artists don't. Um, so just put yourself out there because not a lot of artists are going to, um, do that or reach out and you want to really set yourself apart and you're not going to find, you're not going to just like find opportunity waiting for it. You have to actively look. And I've learned that a lot over the years is I still do free work um, for brands or places that I want to be. So like I now am booked with like an agency, but before that point I was doing work for free with agencies. Um, so just make sure that you're like putting yourself out there. Um, and also invest in your knowledge like I said, you want to, it costs money to get into like a group of um, people. You sometimes have to pay for the people that you're, to be around the people that you're networking with. Um, so there are like master classes or those master network brunches. I encourage you definitely to like go out there and network with those people and tell them what you've got to offer. Um, let's see. Also stay on top of current trends. So this was huge for me during COVID, right? During COVID, I am service-based. Everything I do is service-based. Even when I was working at the restaurant was service-based, makeup is service-based. So I was sitting at home. I'm like, dang, like I'm really not out here making any money right now. So what I did instead was create. This is when I like started going heavy on TikTok. So um, I'm really big on TikTok and Instagram. Well, I, I mean, as in like, that's what I like to do most. Not that like, I'm like a mega star on TikTok or Instagram, but those are the things that I, I like to do most. Um, and I started making TikTok videos all the time, like every day for my makeup and just creating looks. So even though, even though I couldn't service people, I was still creating and letting them know, like, this is what I do. Um, So it's all about like adapting to change, you know, Um, social media is like, just like such a huge influence right now. And if you're not a part of it, I know it's its own separate job, basically. I know I hear it from photographers, from anybody who does service-based things, like, dang, like, being a content creator and an artist, like I really have to do both. Yes. Unfortunately you do, but it's all about, um, the more for me, I like to be able to show them that I'm not just a makeup artist. I'm also a content creator, you know? So it's all always how about how you look at things. So yes, but that is overall my 
my like story of how I got from point A to point B and where I'm at now, um, I definitely want to open the floor up for questions, whether that like be about how to start your LLC or any questions revolving around like how I've like started to work with photographers or models. Um, just let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to either put your questions in the chat or um, feel free to let us know. We can unmute you and you can ask Daryl and um, your question directly. And I actually want to start us off with questions. Um, yeah. Daryl Ann, can you? Uh, were there any organizations along the way that helped you um, locally? Um, you know, we have a lot of business owners that start or entrepreneurs who start even just with an idea at the library. And so we refer them to a lot of local organizations. Were there any that you specifically utilize to grow your business or seek funding? Mm. I know. I wish I had. It probably would have done a lot better. I did apply because I had already started my um I had already started my business a couple years prior for the PPP loan, um, which really helped um just like cover my bases throughout um COVID um and expand on expand on my kit um my business and kit and clientele. Um but Overall, I really wish that I had more um, resources at the time of starting because that was just such a small fraction. <laughs> Other question? Um, there's a question, how would I start an LLC and what is important to know before starting a business? Oh, okay. So an LLC, um, you do not have to have much income already. Um, you don't really have to have any income to start an LLC. You just like take, I think it's like $130 for the application. Um, and you file online with the state of Wisconsin and then you have your LLC. But I, at first I started as a sole proprietor. Um, for a while. So I had just filed for my LLC like seven months ago, but I've already been in business for like three years um, prior to making that change. But for me, an LLC was just to like um, protect my business. So it stands for like um, it liability, um, limited liability corporation. So say, especially for what I do, um, say I, I don't know, poke a woman's eye out during an application and she decides that she wants to sue me, um, she would be suing my business um, instead of my personal assets, which I thought was really um, important, especially as I started to work with more brides and, you know, bigger bridal parties. And um, it wasn't just my friends that I'm servicing. So I just really wanted to protect my own personal assets. Not that I had like much, but <laughs> um, definitely protecting those. Um, and things to consider before starting a business. What, you have to hone in on what you want out of the business because you can't just go in blind. So I knew that personally for myself that I wanted to work for myself and I saw myself expanding my business. Like I just don't see myself ending as a makeup artist, but I see myself um, continuing on to, oh, hold on just a second. Please keep your questions coming. These are good. Thank you for those who have added your questions um, to the chat so far. 
So yes, um, some of the biggest things about um, starting a business, like I said, is just like honing in on what you want. Like I don't see myself just stopping as a makeup artist. I want to be like a makeup brand. So like, I know that's like the biggest picture and like the big picture for me, like know what your big picture is um, before starting because you really want to know what your passion is because as a small business owner, you're not a big business. Like you're on call 24 seven, 365 days. You're not clocking out at any point. So like a lot of people want to start a business and then like, don't realize that like, there's no end. You really have to keep pushing. So make sure you know what your values are going into it. Next question is, do you have your own studio? And if so, how much is the rent? Okay, so um, I rent a space at a salon currently. Um, so what was awesome about my situation was I was in a black, I'm in a black owned salon in Milwaukee and they were just starting up and they were looking for a makeup artist and um, they cut me a really good deal. And they're like, hey, you know, here, um, here's a space, here's the makeup space. And then as I started, now that I'm an esthetician, they gave me the back space um, for a good deal. Um, so really try finding like places that are starting out. Um, granted, you know, it is difficult growing alongside another business. Um, but yeah, I rent a space. I am currently um, going to be staying there until about September. And then I anticipate moving into my own um, salon suite. Uh, right now I pay about $600 a month, which is decent for, um, having as much space as I do. Um, because if you go and get a suite, it's going to cost you around a thousand dollars to $1,200 a month. So you really want to make sure that you're getting that income, um, and that you're in a good business space before you go shelling out um, rent. And then you're like at $0, <laughs> $0 a month. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have another question. Uh, what is the biggest obstacle you've had to endure with your business? Mm. I feel like, um, being shut out, like amongst my peers, um, was really hard for me um, because of the style of makeup I do. Um, sorry, my Wi-Fi is like so bad. So, cause I had like a whole power slide with like my actual work on it. Um, but my style of makeup is very like glam natural. So I like to go very bold on the eyes, but the face routine is like pretty like your skin, but better. Um, and in the city where I'm located, you know, um, women love the Instagram look. Um, so I felt like I wasn't getting the clientele that I like, I know that I do good work. So I was just like, why am I not getting the clientele that I want? Like, I don't get why everybody's so booked up. Like her work is straight and all right. And, but like, I don't get why I'm not getting clientele. So it was really finding your niche. I, can't stress that enough. Find your niche and what sets you out of uh, what sets you apart. What sets me apart um, is that I do. I'm not just a glam artist. I also do a lot of editorial, and I do a lot of um, like fashion runway stuff. So um, just making sure you find your niche because there is enough room for everybody to eat here. Um, you just need to find that the, your market of people. So as soon as I stopped trying to market to those people, those girls, I got so much clientele after that. Um, you talked earlier about um, manifestation um, and you kind of, you know, basically believing in the sentiment, you know, if you believe it, you can achieve it um, through manifestation. Do you have a vision board for your business? Mm -hmm. And if so, what types of things do you have on that vision board? 
Yo, yeah, yeah. My vision board is like scrapbooking. It like changes all the time. <laughs> it's always going. Um, yeah. So my vision board is now in my room. It's like basically a big whiteboard and the cork board looking thing because um, it's ever changing. Um, but yes, I do believe in um, writing out what your beliefs are. I want like ooh, a great exercise for you to try is just like, what is the most like outrageous dream you have? Like, what is the most outrageous thing? Like right now on my vision board, I think I have like a 10 bedroom mansion like, <laughs> and I have like, like uh, several cars and whatnot. And it's just like putting you in that mindset that you want. Like, of course, mine is not going to look the same as everybody else's. Um, but yes, you want to put that out there because you limiting your beliefs is only going to limit what you think you're capable of doing. So I go and apply for things that I think I might be underqualified for. I have applied for things that I think I'm underqualified for and then have gotten those things <laughs> because you just got to put yourself out there, you know? Um, someone else can see the worth in those, worth in what you're putting out. So be confident in your work. And yes, I think vision boards are extremely important. I actually modify mine probably like once every three months once every three months was it what was the other part of the question before I um you pretty much answered it yes okay <laughs> yeah do you have a picture of Rihanna on your vision board she started I love small Rihanna, okay? <laughs> the billionaire now makeup industry no, so like oh. what's funny is because um I like to schedule myself photo shoots I will like schedule myself a photo shoot maybe like twice a year and then I put myself from a great shot of my photo shoot on my vision board and then surround it with all the luxurious things that I have printed out or cut out. And I'm like, see, like I fit really well in that lifestyle, you know? Definitely dream big, we love it. Dream big, you know? Shoot for the stars so you can like end up in the sky, you know? Another question, uh, where can we see your work? Um, and mm. tell us about your social media. Yes, so my social media, my um, Instagram is at blushed, B-L-U-S-H-E-D, beat, B-E-A-T. So blushed beat is my Instagram and my Facebook. Um, if you do want to catch me on TikTok, it's a completely different one. <laughs> I do want to get around to changing it, but it's my blog name that I had from like five years ago. And it's just so catchy that I just can't let it go. So that one is at curls, C-U-R-L-S, have, H-A-V, curves, C-U-R-V-E-S. So that's where you'll find my TikTok. I really love TikTok. I feel like that's where I'm most um, creative um, in my work, so. Yes, oh, thank you. See, I don't know how to use Zoom, so I keep seeing like these chats pop up, but I don't even know where to find them. <laughs> yes, we have all your information there, so people can definitely check you out. Um, do you utilize LinkedIn a lot? I know you talked about um, networking and that being a big part of you know, your business and business mm -hmm. growth. So do you recommend that as well? So I do recommend LinkedIn. I don't, I haven't had as much like um, interaction or luck on LinkedIn um, because like I have to go and submit to agencies personally. So like finding individuals isn't always like um, good for what I do, but yes, I still like, um, post occasionally on there. I actually should post more often um, just because I might catch the eye of the right person. But yeah, 
for that exact reason, definitely use uh, utilize LinkedIn because there was this trick I actually found on TikTok of like, you can type in the company that you want to work for, right? And then it'll come up like with all like maybe your mutual connections. Like you have a high school friend that happens to work at that company that you work for, they work for, or that you want to work for. Um, and then you can be like, hey, high school buddy. Well, I wouldn't put it like that, but like, <laughs> But it's easy to like, um, you know, get it more, it's easier to find the connections through LinkedIn than it is just mindlessly wandering through like Facebook. Definitely a good suggestion. So I hope you're all taking notes as you watch um, Daryl Ann share about her business and her success. Um, did you have to put together a business plan for your business? I did not. I did not have to. Um, but I, I did. <laughs> I did it anyway. Um, like I said, um, when I started like pivoting my mindset, um, it's all about like, what do I see a successful person doing? And for me, that was like, even though I don't need a business plan, I'm going to have one, even though I, um, don't know how to manage books. I'm definitely going <laughs> to download that uh, QuickBooks and have, um, yeah, have a website, professional website and all that. So definitely take the time to sit down, write a business plan, be realistic with yourself. Um, yes, be outrageous with your dreams, but be realistic about your business and um, your goals because yeah, sure. It would be nice to hit like 5,000 followers in a month, but you need to um, sit down. It's kind of hard sometimes to like think, like narrow down your big picture, but start with the first 90 days. Start with the first 90 days of what you want to achieve in that first 90 days. And then, then you need to go in and break that down month to month. So um, what is one, what's a goal that I just made? Um, oh, I want to... Um, I want to work for LA Fashion Week this um, this year. So that's like my 90 day goal is to network with someone within that um, field. Um, I just happened to network with someone that I know personally who models out there. Um, so she was like, okay, I need you to get your portfolio together. Um, um, I need you to have like a cover letter and all of this ready and blah, 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 blah. So those are to do things, but I know that it's going to take me about a week to get my portfolio together. It's going to take me like, just because how scatterbrained my mind is, it's going to take me a few days to get my cover letter together. Um, so all of those things are fitting into just like my monthly plan. So don't take off a big chunk, take off a little chunk. Good advice for staying focused and staying on track. Yes. Yes, definitely. You want to do not, um, my suggestion is 90 days, six months, one year, five year plan. That's how I like to break down my goals. Yeah. Um, so we are coming to a close on a program. Uh, definitely, you know, appreciate your time here. Um, I know in the beginning of the program, you started talking about, um, you know, family, um, how have you been able to um, juggle that as you continue to expand your business? Um, do you do little fun things with them? Do you do makeup on your kids? I mean, I know they're kids, but you know, sometimes it's hard. It's so hard. Yeah, it's very hard. It's an ongoing, you know, challenge <laughs> because not only am I a makeup artist, I'm also a musician um, and I'm also a student at Aveda. Um, so like the mom guilt is very high <laughs> some days. Um, but ultimately like when I'm with my children, I'm as present as I can be. So the phone is away. Um, even if we only get to see each other for like the weekend, um, we're definitely packing it in. We're going to go for a picnic and then we're going to go have lunch and then we're going to go, um, to sky zone or whatnot. Um, and even if it is a chill day at home, like my daughter now is like 
course she wants to like do everything that mom does so I'll sit and do her stuff. and my son is big into like um scary werewolves and stuff like that so like I'll turn them into a werewolf or something like that so just really trying to connect with them um and bring them into my world too that's really important I best I but my, I... my parents do be guilt tripping me my 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 parents do guilt trip me. They'd be like, Dylan, uh, you don't call enough. And I'm uh, I'm trying. I'm working on it, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying. Well, I'm sure they have some of the best costumes ever because they have an awesome mom who's awesome. Yeah. Makeup, so. <laughs> yes, I love Halloween season for sure. Thank you so much. Any one good lasting thought to share with um, our guests tonight? I would say, like if something's not sitting right with you in your current situation, um, try to figure out what it is, you know, because it's quick, you know, like I was sitting at that horrible job for two years and I was uncomfortable from beginning to end. And it's just like two years go by like that. And I know people sit a lot longer and being uncomfortable in their situation. And we all tend to do that, but like, it's really important to figure out what, what's speaking to you and what's wrong and fixing that because, um, you know, you deserve to be happy in the things that you do in this world, you know? Thank you definitely for that. We wish you much success. We thank you for joining us tonight. Um, this is just one of many small business success stories that we like to feature through the Business Technology and Periodicals Department at the Central Library. During the coming months, we'd like to definitely expand our programming offerings and definitely invite you to come and check out our department for all of your business needs. If you are looking to create a business plan or you need connections to the wonderful organizations within our community to help you with your business, for funding, you need help with marketing, um, definitely reach out. My name is Marty Bell Henderson. I am the coordinator um, of the Business Technology and Periodi Periodicals Department at the Central Library. Um, Daryl Land, please definitely check her out, support her, and continue to connect and network for all the great things that you may be looking for, you know, or maybe inspired to do tonight um, with this talk with Daryl Ann. So again, thank you for joining us and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daryl Ann. Thank you for having me. We'd love to have you back. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.